last week, I ended up meeting with a um, kind of a whistleblower, but he works in those deep black programs, more specifically what I witnessed, except he was not at the event that I witnessed. He was at the event that happened like that in 2004 in Mexico. So he's been feeding me information, telling me what things are. He's going to give me information to release to the public documentations on the event that also corroborate what I've been talking about. So that's been very exciting. Um, it's been nerve wracking, of course, because you find out what the truth of everything is. But at the same time, there's some things that are relieving on that because it's not what anybody thinks. And now that I'm educated with it, that's why I want to take the time to show people and tell people what's going on. This particular gentleman wants to come out in full force, but he cannot because of the risk associated with this position, because he's been involved with this black team, if you want to call it that, since the 90s. And he's given me more in-depth uh, information as far as what his specific role is and everything that's involved with the screening process of how people even get selected to partake in these operations, uh, where some of them are actually out of certain locations. He took me to a facility that I cannot talk about. I signed a non-disclosure with him on that, but I did see a facility that they work at and uh, it's pretty mind blowing. But the information is going to come out soon. So as soon as that's the case, I will also release that to uh, Mr. Hecker to get that out to the public as well, if that's what you're interested in. That episode of Sean Ryan, I've had uh, a Marine who was there with me reach out to me because he saw the podcast and I, I haven't talked to this gentleman since 2011 mm -hmm. and he reached out to me thanking me for getting the word out so he may be somebody that you know I'm letting him kind of regain his thinking uh, he, he's been on so many different types of drugs through the VA because of PTSD he had thought realistically because these drugs also help repress memories mm -hmm. when I talked about the experience on Sean Ryan he had told me over the phone that he thought it was a dream. Mm -hmm. And then when he saw the episode happen, he realized, oh, that's not a dream. So he was asking a little bit more things to jog his memory to understand it. So if that's the case, I mean, I've already got two people out of six. So three of us total who uh, at least can verify that it happened. Wow. So that's, that's a positive aspect with it. And of course, just like everybody here in this group, you get a lot of naysayers. I have people I served with that are fucking calling me a liar and you know all this kind of stuff, which I don't really care about. They weren't there. They're not. They have no idea what the just, hell's uh, going we on. We were just discussing right now, um, you know, what's what's been really been going on since uh, last we communicated, and kind of I guess you'd say almost like a, the state of disclosure. Michael was just discussing. I had asked him, you know, does he think that things are worse than people have been? I guess anticipating or expecting from disclosure. Um, myself personally, I kind of feel like things are, um, I feel like they're a lot worse. I think, you know, people were looking about UFO disclosure and we were just discussing how it's like, seems like there's a lot of profiteering, a lot of corruption, a lot of monopolies going on. Um, it seems that a lot of this stuff is boiling down to, you know, like, uh, Michael's testimony in regards to uh, human trafficking, child trafficking. I mean, this is this is a, a it's a goddamn nightmare, if you ask me. And this is why I think there's actually so much secrecy, so much hidden technology. Um, this is just kind of bringing you up to speed and, and where we're at. Do you have any do you have any thoughts on that type of stuff? Well, man, you know, behind the scenes, we've all. Uh, talk about our take on it you know and obviously it's whenever it comes to the child trafficking and things like that it's not a matter uh, of saying that it has to be stopped we people need to band together and get together and stop this right you know, cut the head off the snake yes it is the time for for small talks and half measures are over i mean we are so far beyond that and uh, it's kind of a caveat but you know, one of my biggest frustrations is to watch the House Oversight Committee put these people on, on the stand under oath just to have them plead the fifth. And it's blatantly obvious that they're corrupt, that the only thing that they care about is their portfolio. They don't give a damn about their, their uh, the personal opinion that good Americans have of them. And in a sense, the last thing that we need to combat this is not an oversight committee. We need violence of action. 
And there's so many people that'll sit back and say, oh, well, you know, that's, you can't do this. Or all the bleeding hearts that are scared to get their hands dirty. You know, it, it's really easy to step back and be a money morning quarterback whenever you don't have to see, you know, the things that Herrera saw, you know, the things that you witnessed personally, you know, the things that I've witnessed myself and be in different parts of Asia, South America, it is disgusting. Well, gentlemen, I want to kind of bring up something that, you know, I'm, I'm disgusted the way that Arrow is handling things. You know that Sean Kirkpatrick, he's a gentleman that we talked to in Arrow. We can't explain the process on how that works, but I know I got face to face with him at the skiff there at the Pentagon. And um, he flat out told everybody through LinkedIn, and it wasn't even a representation of what the uh, arrow or even uh, uh, anybody involved in government. This was more like a personal thing he put out, slamming all three of those guys that actually testified before Congress on uh, last week, calling them all liars. That is yeah. fucking disgusting. That is disappointing because guess what that does? What that does is it doesn't allow anybody in our situations. If that would have happened, I don't know if people would have. Uh, you know, they would have taken it seriously or they would even be like, hey, we're not going to come out and talk about this because we're going to get called liars. Granted, these gentlemen had factual evidence of what they were talking about. They had videotapes. They had audio. They had radar signatures. They had everything, even documentation on the projects, um, even Grush's people that he's talked to that work in these. He had everything. And the first thing they said is, oh, we didn't ever receive anything from him or for the Senate Intelligence Committee or for the Special Intelligence Service or even the House Oversight Committee. So they completely w did a 180 on this and went the opposite direction. That's just disgusting. Yeah, I, I feel like it's very it's very hard to find friends in this community. Um, not like I'm really trying to find friends. Um, I'm happy to kick people in the shins quite regularly because I think a lot of people in the disclosure community uh, are representing some sort of a faction and not for good reasons. I think a lot of people are well aware of the fact that the mass media is bought and sold. But I think people haven't really considered how much of the internet content is also bought and sold and marketed. And, you know, a lot of these podcasters, um, except for folks like Sean Ryan, and I recently did a, a interview with the guy from Redacted. And I think there's a fistful of people that actually care about what's going on with humanity on this planet. Um, but I think it's extremely few and far between. And I think that we should take the people that are doing the right thing and we should put them up on pedestals. But I think the people that are doing the wrong thing, I mean, we should rip them out from their knees and, and debase them and out them. And I'm, I'm really getting sick and tired of all the people that are, that are out there muddying the waters. Um, but with that being said, Robert's been someone who's been in disclosure quite some time. He's met both of you gentlemen. We've, you know, we've spoken to each other uh, privately, behind the scenes, and, and been gauging this stuff. Robert, I mean, what's been your experience in disclosure from when you started until now? I mean, what's your perspective on this? Where, where are we at with disclosure? Well, it's been a long time coming. It's been uh, 33 years now. Uh, since I had that experience. So that's personally when disclosure happened to me when I had a UFO crash behind my house after years of not being able to find evidence from it being scrubbed, etc. 30 years after I found the evidence and after 30 years of saying that if I ever found anything to prove this story, I would go public with it. I would talk about it because my whole life it was like the most incredible thing I've ever seen. So long story short, put things simply, it did not go the way I thought it was going to go. I think we can all agree on that. It never does. And I thought I had this like the Roswell of New Jersey, right? I thought I finally made it. I have all the evidence, police reports, uh, military transcripts, everything. And it didn't go down that way. It had a little buzz, and once it got a little too big, got on a lot of different radars, and you know, the censorship started. But uh, in the meantime, I helped a lot of people interviewing them, including Eric, you know, having them come on the show, tell their experiences, present their information, evidence, all those things, pretty open minded. And I was just working with everyone and I got wrapped up into a lot of groups that I thought wanted the best for me. And uh, it 
took a year or so to find out that once you get deep enough in, there's just a lot of con artist people without any sort of evidence behind them just telling fantastical stories to make entertainment and to profit off of it where my whole mission is to get you know accountability for my mom being threatened that they would take me away after the ufo crash behind my house if she didn't say it was a helicopter you know this whole situation of threatening a 22 year old mother these projects need to be held accountable they absolutely need to be held accountable and i believe when certain information gets made more to the public and they start to be held accountable then i think the state of disclosure will start to balance itself out but up until that point they're active working behind the scenes to silence a lot of different people that present any sort of remedy of the truth that's an interesting point that you make robert and i'm sorry to cut you off but one complaint that i saw and i got a ton of emails about this there were other guys who were shooters that were critiquing the story just based off of you know certain things that i would say like the accident that destroyed my body and my career you know <clears throat> they got hung up on me saying that it was like a jfx and it was a combat jump and, and this guy comes back and he's like tearing me apart he's like I, you know i'm associated with the uh, this group on fort bragg and that year span there was nobody that reported an accident that, that you're talking about and i was like you're absolutely right tell me one time that i ever said my accident occurred in fort bragg <laughs> right but, I mean, that's the problem. You've got people that are listening to the story, not objectively. They are going into it already with a preconceived mindset. I'm going to start picking these guys apart. Right. And they're not listening to what we're saying. And to harken back to what you were, you were talking about with the accountability that needs to happen with these people, it cannot come from these established acronyms in Washington, D.C., because we already know what's going to happen if that happens. Even if it's attempted, it's only going to be based off of whoever wrote that script. Whoever is pumping in the government at this point, they're just going to read the same script over and over and over. Do you see? I see comments like that. I just, I just presume they're from a faction that we're fighting against. That they're just going to, they're going to write anything they want to try to discount what you said to the public. That it's just, well, that, that's the thing, I believe man. that comment it's is completely fabricated um, uh, counterintelligence. I, that's all crossed my mind. You know, and I've had people say, well, you know, you guys look like you're paid actors or you're you're very rigid. This looks like you're putting something on. I said, look, man, the most people I talked about, you know, that joke that I cracked at the, the first event that all three of us saw each other for the first time. I was like, I'm not used to doing this without a guitar in my hands. That was absolutely true. So having them set up there and to recount these events, that destroyed my life. I had never said that shit out loud. Right. The only other time that I did was at the Arrow office whenever we were being vetted and whenever I had to testify before Congress behind closed doors. Yep. That was the first time that I ever let that out. Yeah, it's one thing to live in your head and in your heart, but whenever you start to stand in front of those people mm -hmm. and and you know try to speak from the heart, it's not easy. Yeah, people, and people people presume a lot, and they have no idea what's going on when they try to armchair quarterback the whole circumstance. I noticed I noticed a comment where somebody said, "Well, I was obviously lying when I was talking to Sean Ryan because I sat in the chair, had my hands on the armrest, and never moved them, so therefore I'm lying." And you you gentlemen were both there, and 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 Sean had given us great direction on how to sit so that we were behind the microphone so that he could hear us correctly. So all I was doing was trying to sit still, so I. Provided good audio. <laughs> you know, but part of me wishes that, that they, they could actually apart. have audio of all the shit that we were talking about before we started rolling. Oh my. Well, and I had a, uh, you know, uh, the event that I was talking about, um, at least before DC came on with this gentleman that briefed me in California, who's a part of the, that team. Um, I mean, the team's global, just so you guys know. It's not just like a small group. I mean, it's a, it's a global organization. And, um, they, the event that he was personally on in 2004 in Mexico, 
JSOC got wind of what they were doing, but they thought it was out of nuclear proliferation. It wasn't actually, you know, getting these people in these containers and whatnot and what they're used for. Um, so JSOC got visual on them and they opened fire on these guys and JSOC ended up getting killed in the process completely. Uh, there was no survivors on their team. As a matter of fact, the black team had no casualties. They had no wounded, nothing. Because how great of operations these guys conduct so well when somebody especially jsoc i mean these guys are top notch too by the way mm -hmm. but you have the black team here which has technology to assist them god knows if they're implanting stuff into them to make them hyper responsive or even know what's going on but the fact is that an entire unit got wiped out by these guys mm -hmm. It shows us severity. It's like, okay, so if we, let's say if, if my, myself and uh, five other Marines actually opened up on these guys, we wouldn't be here. Right. We'd been, you know, so it'd been, it, it's good that, you know, we can actually understand to a degree. One, we're not trying to open up on our own guys. That's right. a, is so horrible to do. Mm -hmm. It happens, but there's always something that follows you and it's that guilt for the rest of your life because you end up killing somebody that was on your side, essentially. Mm -hmm. So that's always the thing that you're trying to mitigate more. But, you know, at the same time, and I'm just thankful that I'm actually still here. I'm thankful that my guys are still here, you know, and that's 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 most important. Mm -hmm. So whether, you know, there's also the scrutiny of, oh, well, Marines aren't supposed to surrender. Well, we didn't surrender realistically. We actually got out alive. Nowadays, what do you guys think of with, you know, I don't know how long DC and Michael have been paying attention to disclosure, so to say, but in my mind's eye, I feel like we almost need to like, like clean slate all the junk that's been presented up until this point. Um, I feel like there's been way too many people muddying the waters of disclosure. Um, so I, I presume that you guys having, you know, some military training, uh, seen some action and stuff like that, that you can notice that there's intelligence, there's counterintelligence, you know, there's many factions going on. What do you guys suggest? Like, what do you think our next best step is for A, getting the truth out and B, knocking down like the BS artists, so to say, because there seems to be so many of them. What do, what do you guys think? Well, you know, the, this is why we have good resources being in our group, gents, is because, you know, obviously we, we can pick apart people pretty easy, especially they come from a military experience and background, it's even easy to do too. Um, so I'm not gonna name names, but I, you know, we, we ran into somebody who was a BSer and we know that the things were picked apart to that degree because it was just one, things were being, the stories were changing. That's kind of the degree. You notice that people are changing their stories. It's not gonna be necessarily a great thing because overall they're muddying the waters with that. So if they're muddying the waters and all of a sudden you're gonna have things that, you know, especially with all three of us going to uh, Congress, Senate, uh, Senate Intelligence Committee, you know, and having speaking to some senators personally, you're gonna see people who won't even go to that measure because when they're talking to these people, these senators are specifically there to actually vet people they're not just going to be there to listen to what you're saying. They're actually there to vet you and make sure that if there's anything they've heard of, because they're not going to tell you that they've heard different instances from different people, whether it's, you know, Grush, for example, or all these other gentlemen that come forward. So when you take account for different things that actually link dots together, that's what they're there for. They're going to make sure that what you're saying is actually truth and honest. So when it comes up to vetting people, I think us as individuals, we need to understand that there's going to be counterintelligence there's going to be people that that's their job whether it's to a degree of um people i don't know how you put it you know making sure that they're going to do things that is going to be right for the right truth not just to have a good story to tell people mm -hmm. what do you think dc and i think that there's an sop that whoever's in control of the media um, yeah, there's an SOP that they follow. To me, it's wall locker politics. You know, you can go to any soldier, open their wall locker at any time, and it looks exactly the same all across the board. You know, you guys saw the shadow ban that was going on just from the, you know, what I consider to be a small event that we were a part of where we met. You know, and it's it, the same thing that Mike was saying. Is there's zero accountability. And, you know, 
I've had people propose the question to me and be like, yeah, we get all that. We've heard this ad nauseum. Who is, is, are going to be the ones to make this happen? Who are going to be the ones to, you know, give them that gut check, hold them accountable. And the people who do hold them accountable, what gives them the right to be the people to hold them accountable? Right. And that's, well, one of the things I I think Robert being held down with what he was doing. Um, I was watching the video of you two together and the comments were just rolling out and they just kept popping out of nowhere. They were going, just being taken away. And it's, it's like some kind of bot that's programmed and, and an algorithm to take care of the people that they are already aware of. Some people can't get a word in edgewise. And you know, I knew uh, whenever uh, I wasn't being disrespectful, Mike, whenever you were talking about the BS, but I looked over at Hecker and, and he knew exactly why I was laughing because we know exactly who you're talking about. Yeah. And we were just these guys that were out for ourselves. We would lay all of that on the line. We would publicly decimate those some of those clowns. But that's not what we're about. I'm more focused on the truth than making somebody else look bad. Yeah. The way that this is going to change, gents, is us doing what we're doing today, for example. This is a way that it's going to change because there's going to be people we're pulling into our group that may need the support. They may need the resources. They may need the the people that we can potentially get them in front of to actually talk about and also go through the vetting process with them. A lot of people lack discernment, right? And it's because they don't have the life experience. They're sitting here just looking at digital media. And um, like I mentioned to Robert earlier this week, I said, you know, I saw something the other day that really struck a chord with me that, you know, if, if, if I said to you, DC, like, hey, it's raining outside. And Robert turned to you and said, no, it's sunny outside. It's it's not your job to pit us against each other, have us argue at nauseum. It's your job to stick the head out the window and see which one of us is full of crap. Well, and you also have to have the, the situational awareness that if you don't have time to stick your head outside, mm -hmm. throw an umbrella under your arm just in case. Fair enough. It's always good to have a contingency yeah. in your tactical toolbox. Yeah, good point. Yeah, I think a lot but, of people yeah, nowadays, they don't want to put the effort in to find out the truth themselves. They just want to um, just be involved with um, staying midway and saying, oh, well, I, I, don't, I don't know who's right. I don't know who's wrong. Maybe it's raining. Maybe it's sunny. You know, I don't want to bicker. I just want to be friends with everyone. And it's like, well, one of your friends is wrong. <laughs> you know? Midway. And, and potentially lying. And if you're not gonna put the work in to find out if it's raining or not, or if you need an umbrella when you go out there, well then, I mean, technically these, these people are A, screwing themselves, and then B, screwing everybody else that they're now lacking the discernment in the conversation and, and pushing it forwards, you know? Uh, you know, it's, I feel like it, it's, it's not lost on me that we just kind of came around at the perfect time when this ball started rolling, it was like, you know, everybody else who has suffered because of this direct topic and the efforts that were made to try to hide it and suppress it, you know, they were pushing the boulder up Everest. And now it has just got to the summit and it's falling over on the other side. And we're lucky to be a part of that momentum. And, you know, something I believe we touched on earlier, <laughs> you know, the comments, you know, whether people realize it or not, we see all of that shit. It's not like, you know, they're going to be ambiguous for the rest of their life. That's why, you know, on YouTube, whenever I will go to watch this stuff, my icon and my name is exactly how it is. It's my face. It's my name, DC Long. I don't try to hide behind some damn keyboard just to piss or, or troll somebody. You know, I'm just not about that. But we see everything that, that you know, the people who are watching are saying. And we appreciate the support. The naysayers don't bother us, but you know, I feel like it's it's almost a responsibility to let people know that that shit looks glamorous from the outside looking in. I've heard people say, you know, oh man, it must be nice to be up there. Hell no, it's not nice to be up there. You know, when that shit stopped and I came back to North Carolina, right here to my house, whenever you and I got back from um, uh, Sean's show, you know, I've done so many, it's hard to keep track of all of them, but. It, you know, there was a bullet hole in my damn house. 
Oh, my, uh, my mailbox being trashed, the shit being taken, the back door right there, the damn locks being broken on it. You know, every other day it's always something else. Somebody just screwing with us. People driving by, you know, yelling shit. People in my neighborhood that watched it, you know, there's overwhelming support, but there's still other people that, you know, want to say things, you know, in front of my kid. Mm-hmm. And, you know, that's, that's a very different side of me that comes out. But we weren't paid for none of that shit. Hi, everyone. Thank you so much for watching this sneak peek preview. If you want to see the uncensored version, please go into the description and check out deciphering.tv. There you can find the full uncensored version, the version that YouTube won't be able to silence us and take down because it's on our website. It's absolutely free. We have these incredible DC whistleblowers, Michael Herrera, DC Long, Eric Hecker, going over the state of disclosure. What is really going on? So if you're hungry for the truth and you're tired and bored from fantastical extraterrestrial stories and you want to know what's really going on, please check out Deciphering.tv. There you can find the full interview and I promise you it's something worth listening to. We call out a lot of different people, we say a lot of different things, and the only way you can check it out is on Deciphering.tv. And hey, while you're at it, please hit that like button, subscribe to the channel. We will have a lot of up and coming videos with many other whistleblowers and other people with amazing stories, amazing backgrounds, and can actually prove what they've done and what they've seen and what they've experienced. We're switching gears here and moving forward. I really appreciate all of your love and support. I've been working very hard on this, working with Eric, and we are working together on Deciphering.tv. We're building an amazing community. So if you would love to be a part of that, please go to Deciphering.tv. Once again, down in the description, you can find that link. And please stay tuned because I will be interviewing Michael Herrera and DC Long in a private interview. Most of you probably saw them on the Sean Ryan podcast. Big shout out to Sean Ryan. Uh, You know where to find me, my good friend. I love what you're doing and you're representing the truth. And if you haven't checked those out, check them out. I'll put a link in the description as well. Really appreciate everyone's support and love. And this is what we need to do to make disclosure happen. So once again, deciphering.tv, you will see me over there quite often. Eric and I were working together to present real factual backed by evidence information to all of you absolutely free. You don't need to spend a dime to check out this website. So go over there, watch the exclusive. That way YouTube can't take us down. That's what it's all about, overcoming the algorithms and doing what we want. That's right. So I'll see you over there and thank you so much. Much love to you all. Thank you for the support. And for all you trolls and naysayers, bring it on because we are the disclosure. If anybody if anybody wants to find out more, I have a website where all this information is at for brevity. I'll wrap it up, but you can go to deciphering.tv. I've documented all of this stuff and information is available. Awesome. Thank you.